okay so in the next video we'll be talking about the virtual gears okay virtual uh, number of teeth in helical gears this is very important virtual number of teeth okay so the thing is to design the helical gears will pro process uh, we will follow the process of spire gear that means we will convert the helical gear to an equivalent spire gear okay so and we'll use all the formulas that we have derived before and the design procedure checking procedure beam strength pair strength all the effective load everything for spire gear but with modification right so uh, you can see that um, these are the helical gears right this is the right handed this is the left handed which i have already explained in the previous video now you see how to make this a spire gear right so for that what we do is uh, let's see um, in a spire just compare this gear this is one gear i have shown here right handed one just compare this one with a spire gear so what if we just draw i mean if we these are the teeth okay teeth are will be actually uh, they will be kind of now they don't look like a teeth but they I mean they are extended a little bit like this so these are the teeth okay so this is all the teeth are, I mean all the teeth so for uh, I mean, simplicity I have shown it in I mean, like lines so here also we have this this is a spire gear I am showing spire okay so for spire these are straight okay? straight right okay parallel to the axis but they are at an angle so you know this angle is the helix angle right this angle is helix angle that is your side Single side, helix single action. Uh, right. So here, uh, compare this. This uh, this uh, gear has an angle. They they are at an angle. I mean, if I show it with some different ink, so these are the angles, right? Right. Okay. So how can we make this as part gear? Right. That's a question. So we want. We cannot just. I mean, cut, uh, modify the teeth because they are fixed, right? Just, can you just move this point to here? No, we cannot do that. I mean, moving this point and making the teeth straight, that is not practical. I mean, uh, we, we cannot do that, obviously. So, how to do this? I mean, we don't actually do it. We, we rather imagine it, okay? So, what uh, we do is see. So, we, um, this is the top view, you can understand, right? I mean, gears are like this, okay? One gear, this is one gear, another gear is here. Okay, both are in meshing so they have different uh, i mean right hand and right left hand helix they only can mesh right so top view is this so if you cut it like this okay. there's a cutting plane and separation will look like this okay see after cutting afterwards they will look like this you agree right and if you now look at this surface this surface here right this surface here from this side exactly I mean, I am now perpendicular. If I come here and look from this side, then it will look. I mean, we can see that this will look like this. Okay, this is one portion I have shown. This portion I have I have not shown. This portion only I have shown, right? But this portion will look like this. And see, this is circle. Fine. I mean, sorry, sorry. This is not a circle. Um, something like this. Okay, straight part. Part. Um, okay so this portion will look like an ellipse okay ellipse so here here like this like this right so i mean better you will understand here it is here so look at this this now we'll cut it like this at an angle now this angle is very important at what angle we cut it i mean see if we just draw this line and this line i mean perpendicular to the axis there is an angle okay this angle I mean, this line is perpendicular to the axis. You can just uh, um, have a look at this portion. Okay, so here imagine we have lines. Okay, helix like this. Okay, helical. So we we have this is the helix helix uh, helical gear. We have cut it like this. Okay, this is our cutting plane. Okay, here here. Just cut it. Okay, and separate it. You can just understand, right? After cutting. This, these are the two pieces. Good. If you just cut it here, imagine this this whole thing. Okay, 
not cutting a perpendicular to the axis. If we cut it perpendicular to the axis, then we will get what a circle. If we cut at an angle, then we will get an ellipse. That is what I have I was showing. Right? Now, at what angle we cut? I mean, we we can we cannot cut at any any angle like this. There is a particular angle. That angle is actually. I mean, what we do is that cutting plane is perpendicular to these teeth. Okay, I mean these. Whatever it is, I mean, we make it, we just cut it at an angle. And what is that angle? That angle is nothing but psi only, okay? The helix angle. I mean, they have tilted, see, so just compare this, these teeth, you can think that they have tilted to some angle psi, okay? Like this, right? They have changed, oriented to a new position. Now, what we did previously, we wanted to cut it perpendicular to the angle. Now, we will cut it at an angle. And that angle is same as the orientation, and that is nothing but your helix angle, fine? Right? Okay. So this helix angle now cuts it at some portion so that after cutting these, 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 these things, let me show it. So these are ninety degrees. These are perpendicular ninety degrees. Okay. Ninety. Degrees. That means for to every teeth we have a cutting plane. Okay, which are at 90 degrees to all the teeth. Fine. So now this is an ellipse, but for the ellipse, now I mean over the ellipse, we have all the teeth which are straight. Okay, now this is not a spar, I mean, this is not a gear because this is ellipse. A gear, anything must be circular, isn't it? I mean, all the circles, the pit circles, okay, uh, your uh, NM, the NM root circle, the NM base circle, everything, all are circles. So on an ellipse we cannot draw a circle. I mean we must convert to uh, the ellipse to an equivalent circle, right? So, so in that case what we do is we make this ellipse elliptical surface to a circle. Okay. After I mean let's uh, show this one, this this portion somehow. This is the ellipse I have shown. Okay. This ellipse has been obtained from here. Okay. This is how somehow I mean other portions are behind. Okay. It's not shown. Okay, or you can show it here only. Okay, this is the ellipse. Right, let me remove this portion now since you have understood this. So, this is the ellipse part. Okay, vertical part. Now, we just want this to make a circle. Okay, kind of circle like this. Complete circle. Okay, so that on the circle, these will remain straight. Okay, and once we make it is a circle and with straight teeth that is nothing but a square gear okay so that is what we do now uh, since it's an ellipse it will have what semi major and semi minor axis okay isn't it so this is the semi major axis this is the semi minor axis so i have shown it here semi major axis a this one and semi minor axis is this and their dimensions uh, you can show them. I mean, this is uh, their derivation is available in some books. So, they uh, this is the pitch circle diameter, okay, and this is your angle. Um, angle. So, d by two cos psi, that is your semi minor axis, and semi minor axis is d by two, okay, simply. Right. Now, if we just convert this ellipse to a circle, then it will have what some radius, okay? Circle will have some radius. So, uh, that radius can be found from this formula, okay, it can be shown that that radius is equal to a square by b, I mean, the semi major axis square divided by the minor axis, right, okay, once you put all the values and you will get the radius as d by 2 cos square psi, fine, so that means we have modified the ellipse to some circle, okay, with straight teeth, teeth are straight here, somewhere, I mean, all the teeth are there, okay, now we have made it a spark gear with some radius value of this, okay, this value. Okay. Now this is imaginary, we actually don't cut the vertical gear, okay, we just imagine it cutting at this angle and after obtaining the ellipse we make it a circle, right. So all these things are virtual or that's why we call it a virtual spark gear or formative spark gear, okay, both are, uh, both names are there. So virtual or formative spark gear is this one and since you have modified it okay 
this module will also be modified so i mean uh, we have talked about this the normal module like a uh, source module here we use a normal module for this okay and uh, the thing is now uh, there we just don't keep the same number of teeth okay there is one one thing okay if we i mean you can think that okay we have cut it like this right see um, the logic is i mean okay till until it is an ellipse okay the number of teeth are same right okay fine now if we make it a circle right we have to correctly fit i mean equis um, all the teeth now has to move because see this portion has reduced this portion is increased they have to shift just their spaces uh, places the all the teeth right so they will just increase and decrease something all the teeth so i mean uh, to accommodate i mean the thing is it may fall short or it may increase or decrease okay we don't know so for that what we have to do is in the newly formed spar gear we will actually fit more or less number of teeth okay so those are also i mean imaginary okay we don't do it but okay in calculation only we do that okay so in the newly formed virtual gear we have to just determine how many teeth will be there okay for that we have a formula the new new number of teeth that is z dash okay will be equal to the previously had i mean suppose it has around 10 teeth okay 20 teeth okay that teeth the z was the previous uh, i mean uh, z is you can say the number of teeth in the helical gear okay divided by cos cube psi psi is your helix angle okay by dividing this uh, number of teeth of helical gear divided by cos cube psi we get the newly formed number of teeth for the virtual spar gear okay? and this is called your virtual number of teeth this part okay z dash right so you just uh, remember this okay and uh, this is important because uh, I mean the entire process in, is important because everything we modify now and I mean now and uh, from now and we just do all the calculation based on this virtual spar gear okay so this was about virtual number of teeth now what happens to the uh, your let's say dimensions gear dimensions those were those are available okay so your gear dimensions they also get modified okay all your uh, standard tooth proportions and all these things they are available in the other book okay and uh, you can have a look at that what happens to your um, beam strength okay and wear strength you see that so beam strength for spar gear was given by what fp is equal to m p sigma b into y for this also okay these remain same hmm. Uh, I mean, see, B will be modified because that is a dimension, right? And for this uh, gear, um, virtual spar gear, B has been modified, okay? So the modified formula is also written here, okay? Uh, so you can say uh, it is actually written as MN B into sigma B. I mean, after modifying this one, you will get MN B into sigma B into Y. Okay, so this is your normal module. Okay, we have to use normal module. And for wear strength, this is for we write as SB for helical gear. Okay, this is for helical gear. Helical gear. And wear strength comes. Okay, for the helical gear, wear strength is given by. So BQ D into K. Normally, this is the pinion diameter for the pinion dpk divided by now in this case it becomes cos square psi these formulas are available in data book so you can use them right so uh, these are the modifications now one thing that is very important is the force analysis right so let, let us just understand that thing right okay okay so The force analysis for the gear, helical gear, force analysis for helical gear. Now see, 
uh, let's draw one medical gear here okay with uh, I mean let, 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 let me show the teeth in this manner but one teeth tooth which is taking the load I mean can be shown in this manner okay so that you understand now this is one of the teeth tooth fine okay this is the tooth okay I think you have understood right fine now see there is another gear which will mate with this one this one is the gear let's say and it will have a tooth like this sorry uh, yeah all the teeth will be opposite okay this one this is right hand this is left hand so for this also if I draw a gear tooth okay. fine I mean all the gear tooth will uh, teeth will look like this this okay but these are for simplicity I have shown with using a line now see this is going to meet this one this gear, this tooth okay and finally they will leave okay like this fine this is rotating in this manner this is rotating in this manner fine now see when imagine this meets this one okay so you see these two points they meet first at these two points okay and finally they leave it here because they will they are they are closer okay they meet together then they leave it here okay and then they leave it somewhere here now you see uh, compare it with the spire here okay in the spire here let's draw the spire here where the teeth are straight okay straight one spire gear another spire gear is here okay this is tooth is also straight okay straight. I mean straight in the sense that uh, this is the axis let's say they are parallel to the axis okay and they are not parallel to the axis okay they are at an angle to the axis now see for spire here when they come together and push each other we had one force right just the see this let's say this is driving this side is driving okay if they are driven uh, I will take this as driven driven they are driving so this is going to what push this from in, in this direction okay but that is also at an angle right you have shown it I have shown it in uh, some previous videos where this is the this is the common tangent and this this is how it pushes right so this is at an angle this angle is a, your helix angle right now for this see uh, if they were straight okay then also they will strike it I mean they will push it uh, they would have uh, pressurized it this would have pressurized this one at an angle the same angle helix angle okay just think that I mean oh, okay. let me use this these are straight suppose and they come here and this is at an angle okay now they would push the, I mean, take this this is at an angle I mean take this as a plane and here we have the common tendon okay so sorry common tendon will be like this like this okay this is the common tendon see this one is the common tendon right this is the gear gear comes in this manner so common tendon will also be like this so this is the common tendon here okay and this tooth suppose it was it was straight suppose initially like this then what the, uh, the force will be at an angle in this angle okay this is the angle of the force right so the helix angle will come here right but they are already inclined okay inclined right because they are in helix and uh, they have the helix angle so this force will now be will have one more angle in this manner when it already had this helix angle right as you can see now since they are at an angle so this will come here so one angle is this I mean this is the force okay it, it, it will make I mean this blue one makes an angle to the black which is the helix uh, sorry, uh, pressure angle and this is the helix angle the blue one makes an angle of with this one that is the helix angle right so if I show you the force okay which is acting like this which is also available in your, in your textbook this is the force right so this force uh, um, like this if you show so it is uh, 
here it is at an angle okay which is your pressure angle okay alpha and this side it is the helix angle okay yeah that is how they have shown it now this one it's the normal uh, the normal pressure angle because this is your uh, helix 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 here normal pressure angle is this and this is your helix angle right so this is the force applied p they have shown it as p right yeah so now since it is making two angle with one angle okay i mean if it is difficult for you to understand so this is one okay and this is in this in this plane okay so let me show you the axis all the axis so this is one axis this is one axis and mm, here is one axis okay so this force is here here somewhere so it is making an angle with your x axis also okay this axis let's say this is x so with, with this axis also it is making a one angle and with this uh, uh, I mean this axis also I mean you can see right here this is making an angle this, this will be complex forget it so uh, you have understood at the first time I, I just assumed that uh, you have to imagine in that case so this is force P and now say this is psi so Considering this angle, I mean this angle, we can resolve it into two components, PT and this is PR, okay, radial and tangential, that we did before in your spire here. Now, due to one more angle, this helix angle, we will have one more component, that is your axial, okay, P axial, right, and you, all of you know that uh, in helix uh, helical gears, while uh, helical gears mesh, okay, then they experience what? your axial thrust okay in spar gear they don't experience it but in helical gear because of this component they experience the axial thrust okay so all these values they are present right and now we'll actually uh, since your I mean uh, syllabus includes the force analysis only we'll not talk about this into detail but uh, you can you, I mean uh, get the formulas to find out how to find out these values okay so tangential component okay, tangential here component can be found from the formula that you already know as usual so two into the torque okay divided by your pitch cycle diameter okay then your radial force pr can be found 